Okay, good morning, Year 11. I hope you're all doing well and looking forward to your return to vague normality with school this week. Um, well done for your hard work so far. I've been really impressed with your engagement, especially on Teams. So a big well done. Um, as explained previously, today's double is back on the topic of the Weimar Republic and Nazi Germany. But before we begin, just a quick recap of the five steps to successful home learning, as these will help to retain your knowledge learned today. So just rule number one, uh, find somewhere quiet to watch this video. Number two, sit at a table or a desk. Number three, turn off all distractions around you. Number four, have a pen and preferably your old history exercise book, if not some lined paper to hand. And number five, uh, finally remember, you can always pause this video and rewind. Your first task is to complete the Seneca quiz uploaded. It's a short quiz, five minutes, but it will help you to recall some of the knowledge learnt in last lesson and will also get you back into the cycle of learning, of learning through the Seneca platform. So please pause the video now and complete the Seneca quiz if you haven't already, which I posted on Teams. So next, we are actually going to begin today with looking at our first paper-free exam question using the information learnt last week on the Weimar Constitution and what you would have picked up from Seneca today. So a reminder of how the exam questions are laid out. Here we go. So we are looking at paper three, which is worth 30% of your GCSE. And this exam paper three lasts one hour, 20 minutes. Here we go. So there are two sections to this paper and it has a combined total of 52 marks. Section A, as you can see, is worth 16 marks and should take roughly 20 minutes. Question one is a four mark inference question and question two is an explain why, which is 12 marks. And that's similar to the crime and punishment paper. Section B is a little different uh, as it analyzes sources and interpretations. So this section is worth 32 marks and four marks for spelling and grammar and should take approximately an hour. So it'll bring you to an hour and 20 for the full time. We will come to this section later in the module when we begin practicing these questions. Um, and I will give you this booklet when we meet next week so you can always refer back to this page for support. But don't worry straight away for section B. Um, we will come on to that. But today we're going to look at section A, question one. Give two things you can infer from source A about. So this is where we're going to start our lesson today. Source A, question one, give two things you can infer from source A about worth four marks. Firstly, uh, with regards to what you need to know for this question, as you can see, it's worth four marks and should therefore take you no longer than five minutes to answer. And that includes the time taken to read through the source. You need to make an inference and then provide supporting evidence. So as a reminder, we know that an inference is something not directly stated in the source, but which you can kind of work out using the details from the text. So in this box here, and I can maybe go over this uh, next week, it's just worth four marks. You need to mention an inference and provide supporting evidence. OK, and that kind of that will be a quote. So, source A, from the diary of Ruth Strasser, an ordinary German woman who lived through the Weimar Republic. This was written in 1919 when the Weimar Constitution was created. The new constitution seems to have many strengths, especially for me as a woman. Getting the right to vote equally to men feels exciting. If the president is strong, then I feel our country will be protected in a crisis. Because we can elect local representatives to go to the Reichstag, my local area will be able to keep its traditions. But I do not know if everyone is as happy as me, particularly the army, or whether the new government will be able to control them if they resist. So 
So question one asks us to give two things that you can infer from source A about the strengths and or weaknesses of the Weimar constitution. When answering this question, you need to make your inference and then provide detail through the use of a direct quote. For example, I'm going to answer the question here. One thing I can infer from the source as a strength to the Weimar Constitution was that it provided more people the right to vote and ensured greater equality. This is seen in the quote especially for me as a woman getting the right to vote equally to men feels exciting as you can see i've given my inference that a strength to the weimar constitution was that it provided greater equality and i've given my quote which is kind of links to the idea that um, women now have a chance to vote, which says, especially for me as a woman, getting the right to vote equally to men feels exciting. So what I would like you to now do, please, is pause the video and try and complete the second inference. Remember, you can look at the weaknesses of the Constitution the Source A highlights. Give yourself three minutes to do this in your exercise book. I will go up here so you can read the source and then I'm going to go back down so you can see how you can kind of answer it, the structure. So pause the video now and complete that task. So just as a recap, the Weimar Constitution was created in response to the abdication of Kaiser Wilhelm II in 1918. It was basically created because the Emperor of Germany ran away after the First World War. On paper, it looked good as it based itself on a true democracy where everyone was effectively held accountable. So we remember that the people could vote in the president, who chose the chancellor, who chose the cabinet, etc. However, as we know from last lesson, it wasn't as simple as this. Lots of parties were elected into government, which meant they all disagreed when it came to voting on new things. This led to the Weimar Republic as being seen as ineffective. But it also leads on to other problems which we will discuss today. So, today's lesson looks at what were the problems with the Weimar Republic. And we're going to explain the problems caused by the Treaty of Versailles and the stab in the back theory. So pause the video now and write down the title and the date. This first image looks at what, um, this first image, beg pardon, is a famous one that many of you may have seen. So have a look at it. Why are there soldiers standing on tables peering into a packed room? This image is taken in the Hall of Mirrors at the Palace of Versailles in France and shows dignitaries, basically soldiers from across the world, peering in to see the, uh, in, see, peering in to see the signing of the treaty which is the Treaty of Versailles, the agreement that brought the First World War to an end. And this is a very famous picture, all these soldiers and dignitaries looking in to see the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. What I would like you to now do is to pause the video now and look at these two pictures, absorb them, and for each picture in your exercise book, write down what you can see, who might the figures represent, and who you think created them. Give yourself two minutes to do this. So these two images are, as you may have guessed, German cartoons highlighting today's topic 
of Dolchtos, which basically translates to the stab in the back theory. As you can see in this first image here, we have someone who basically appears to be a German politician literally stabbing the German army in the back. In the second image, we have the three superpowers, America, France and uh, Great Britain, um, effectively leading a German prisoner of war to the guillotine, to executing the, this German prisoner. So if we link it to the picture today, what can we infer as to the German reaction of the Treaty of Versailles? How did the German public react to its politicians signing this agreement? So Dolchos, Dolchtos was an idea held by many Germans that German had actually been about to win World War I. But the German government had betrayed them by surrendering and signing the armistice. The main problem was that the German army hadn't actually surrendered in World War I, the German government had. Consequently, many proud right-wing Germans, who were called nationalists, refused to believe that they had actually lost the war. They called the politicians who signed the armistice the November criminals as they ended the war in November 1918, and this theory was known as Dolchtos, okay, or stab in the back theory. This was a serious grievance and meant the Weimar government had alienated many people from the beginning. So this effectively leads us into the arena of politics, as can, uh, as can be seen below, okay. The political spectrum of Germany in 1919 was wide. On both extremes, you have parties that did not agree with the Weimar Republic, as you can see here, against the Weimar Republic. Um, however, they have two very different views, but you, we will come on to that. So you have the communists on the far left, the more extremists on the left of the communists, and the extremists on the right are the nationalists, which turn into the fascists. We come on to more group. We come on to these groups in more details later, and there are major players throughout the module. However, in comparison, more in line with centre politics, we have three parties that make up the majority of the electoral votes now. But this will change. We've got the Social Democrats, the Centre Party, and the German People's Party. What you need to know now, though, is that the two extremist parties, the communists and the nationalists, were opposed to the Weimar Republic, whilst the more centralist parties supported it. However, what do the left and right mean when it comes to the Weimar Republic? What I would like you to please do is read these two boxes of left wing and right wing and draw a stick figure to represent each type of political belief. Give yourself four minutes to do that. Go. I'm going to end the video now because the uh, platform I'm using only allows me to do a 15 minute video. So I'm going to end this video now and I'm going to upload a second video for your subsequent lesson, for your second lesson of the double. Okay, so please now see the second video I'm about to upload. Thank you.